Greetings, everybody. Get out your King James Bible. Turn to Jeremiah chapter 48. This is a continuation of the Jeremiah series, and this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, and John 8:12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, Jeremiah 48, the Lord is pronouncing his judgment against Moab. Now, remember, Moab and Ammon were the children of Lot's daughters when they got their father drunk and had relations with him. And I absolutely do not believe Lot knew what was going on. But uh, a lot of women don't think that's possible, but I assure you absolutely it is possible. So, the, um, in Deuteronomy 23.3, oh, and by the way, uh, the children probably married into the Canaanites. I mean, that's the only thing I can think of as to why this happened the way it did. So, in Deuteronomy 23.3, we read, An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord forever. Oh, but Chaplain Bob, Jesus came and now he changed all that and everybody, now Jesus loves everybody. I don't think so. You know, these are the people that don't, they can't get wrap their heads around the fact that the fallen angels had relations with the women in Genesis 6 and giants with six fingers and six toes and also afterwards. I mean, come on, people. You know, they just don't get it. But angels can't have sex. Yeah, right. Jesus said, the angels that are in heaven, neither uh, married or given in marriage, and are as the angels in heaven. They always leave out that in heaven. Well, guess what? Not all the angels are in heaven. I got an entire playlist on Genesis 6 and the sons of the satanic human fallen angel hybrids. I mean, absolutely. Read Job 38. The sons of God shouted before at the foundation of the world. Adam didn't come until six days later. Angels were created before the earth. That's why when you read the Genesis creation, day one, two, three, four, five, six, it doesn't say anywhere that the angels were created on any day there. But we know angels exist. One angel struck the uh, Assyrians and killed an army of 185,000 men. And that's an army, people. That's an army. So the Ammonites and the Moabites are not going to be in the congregation of the Lord forever. Jeremiah 48 verse 1. Against Moab. Moab is the land of the Moabites. Against Moab, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Woe unto Nebo, for it is spoiled. Kirai Ethiam is confounded and taken. Mizgab is confounded and dismayed. I haven't searched it out, but I'm a guessing that those are cities in Moab. Verse 2. There shall be no more praise of Moab. In Heshbon, they have devised evil against it. Come, and let us cut it off from being a nation, and thou shalt be cut down, O madman. The sword shall pursue thee. A voice of crying shall be from her own name, spoiling and great destruction. Moab is destroyed. 
Her little ones have caused a cry to be heard. For in the going up of Luhith, continual weeping shall go up. For in the going down of Horonim, the enemies have heard a cry of destruction. Verse 6. Flee, save your lives, and be like the hearth in the wilderness. For because thou hast trusted in thy works and in thy treasures, thou shalt also be taken, and Chemosh shall go forth into captivity with his priests and his princes together. And I'm guessing that's the priests and princes, and Chemosh is probably a city of Moab. Although I'm not 100% sure. Verse 8. And the spoiler shall come upon every city, and no city shall escape. The valley also shall perish, and the plain shall be destroyed, as the Lord hath spoken. Give wings unto Moab, that it may flee and get away. For the cities thereof shall be desolate, without any to dwell therein. Cursed be the man, I'm sorry, cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully. Ooh, boy, there's going to be a lot of preachers going to hate this, this, world, this word. Verse 10, Cursed be he that doeth the work of the Lord deceitfully, and cursed be he that keepeth back his sword from blood. Moab hath been at ease from his youth. He hath settled on his lees, and hath not been emptied from vessel from vessel to vessel, neither hath he gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remaineth in him, and his scent is not changed. Okay. Verse 12. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will send upon him wanderers that shall cause him to wander, and shall empty his vessels, and break his bottles. And Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. Now, Bethel just means house of God. And God was not pleased with Bethel. And Chemosh, I think that's the name, let me check. I think it's the name of a heathen god, but and maybe a city named in honor of the city, uh, satanic god, but let me check. Let me check. All right, it's the uh, name of the false god. Verse 13, And Moab shall be ashamed of Chemosh, as the house of Israel was ashamed of Bethel, their confidence. How say ye, we are mighty and strong men for the war? Moab is spoiled and gone up out of her cities. And his chosen young men are gone down to the slaughter, saith the king, whose name is the Lord of hosts. The calamity of Moab is near to come, and his affliction hasteneth fast. All ye that are about him bemoan him, and all ye that know his name say, How is the strong staff broken, and the beautiful rod. Thou daughter that dost inhabit Dibon, come down from thy glory and sit in thirst, for the spoiler of Moab shall come upon thee, and he shall destroy thy strongholds. O inhabitant of Aror, stand by the way and espy, ask him that fleeth and her that escapeth, and say, What is done? Moab is confounded, for it is broken down. Howl and cry. Tell ye it in Arnon that Moab is spoiled. And judgment is come upon the plain country, upon Holon, and upon Yahaz, Yahazah, and upon Methha, Mephath, 
Oh boy, some of these words. And upon Dibon, and upon Nebo, and upon Beth Diblethium, and upon Kirai Ethium, and upon Beth Gamul, and upon Beth Meon, and upon Kirioth, and upon Basra, and upon all the cities of the land of Moab, far and near. Ah, Basra. Basra currently is in the city, or I'm sorry, the country of what is now called Jordan. Just to give you an idea of where it was. Verse 24, And upon Kirioth, and upon Basra, and upon all the cities of the land of Moab, far and near. The horn of Moab is cut off. Now, usually a horn means uh, strength or government. I mean, look at a rhinoceros. You cut its horn off, and what does it got? You know. Or a goat. Cut off a goat's horns, and what does it got? The horn of Moab is cut off, and his arm is broken, saith the Lord. Boy, it's awful hard to fight with a broken arm, you know. Verse 26, Make ye him drunken, for he hath magnified himself against the Lord. Moab shall also wallow in his vomit, and he also shall be in derision. Can you imagine rolling around in your own vomit? For was not Israel a derision unto thee? Was he found among thieves? For since thou spakest of him, thou skippest for joy. Now, I believe what that's referring to was when uh, Israel was punished by the Lord, they were um, skipping for joy. They were happy that Israel had been punished by the Lord and taken into captivity. That's my guess. Verse 28. O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities and dwell in the rock, and be like the dove that maketh her nest in the side of the hole's mouth. We have heard the pride of Moab. He is exceeding proud. His loftiness and his arrogancy and his pride and the haughtiness of his heart. I know his wrath, saith the Lord, but it shall not be so. His lies shall not so affect it. Therefore will I howl for Moab, and I will cry out for all Moab. Mine heart shall mourn for the men of Kirhiraz. O vine of Sibma, I will weep, weep for thee. With the weeping of Jazer, thy plants are gone over the sea. They reach even to the sea of Jazer. The spoiler is fallen upon thy summer fruits and upon thy vintage. And joy and gladness is taken from the plentiful field and from the land of Moab. And I have caused wine to fall from the wine presses. None shall tread with shouting. Their shouting shall be no shouting. I guess it's going to be quiet because there ain't going to be nobody there. Verse 34. From the cry of Heshbon, even unto Ilele, and even unto Jahaz, have they uttered their voice from Zoar, even unto Horonim, as an heifer of three years old. For the waters also of Nimrim shall be desolent. Moreover, I will cause to cease in Moab, saith the Lord, him that offereth in the high places, and him that burneth incense to his gods. Yep, they're not going to be burning incense in the high places to their satanic gods. Therefore, mine heart shall sound for Moab like pipes, and mine heart shall sound like pipes for the men of Ker hearies, because the riches that he hath gotten are perished. For every head, for every head, 
shall be bald, and every beard clipped upon all the hands shall be cuttings, and upon the loins sackcloth. Uh, people shaving your beard and making your head bald and sackcloth, wearing sackcloth, that was a sign of mourning. No, not morning, evening, and afternoon. No, no. Mourning as if a family member that you love died. Verse 38. There shall be lamentation generally upon all the housetops of Moab and in the streets thereof. For I have broken Moab like a vessel, wherein is no pleasure, saith the Lord. They will howl, saying, How is it broken down? How hath Moab turned the back with shame? So shall Moab be a derision and a dismaying to all them about him. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, he shall fly as an eagle and shall spread his wings over Moab. Carrioth is taken, and the strongholds are surprised, and the mighty men's hearts in Moab at that day shall be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. So, you know, like a woman giving childbirth. Verse 42, And Moab shall be destroyed from being a people, because he hath magnified himself against the Lord. Fear, and the pit, and the snare shall be upon thee, O inhabitants of Moab, saith the Lord. He that fleeth from the fear shall fall into the pit, and he that getteth up out of the pit shall be taken in the snare. A snare is just a trap. For I will bring upon it, even upon Moab, the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. They that fled stood under the shadow of Heshbon because of the force, but a fire shall come forth out of Heshbon, and a flame from the midst of Sihon, and shall devour the corner of Moab and the crown of the head of the tumultuous ones. Woe be unto thee, O Moab! The people of Chemosh perisheth. Now remember, Chemosh is the uh, their, their god. The name of their god. The people of Chemosh perisheth. For thy sons are taken captives, and thy daughters captives. Yet will I bring again the captivity of Moab in the latter days, saith the Lord. Thus far is the judgment of Moab. So evidently, Moab is still around because the Lord's going to bring the captivity of Moab in the latter or last days. Saith the Lord, thus far is the judgment of Moab. That's the end of Jeremiah 48. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son. And Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.